Poonam, your takeaway from after some time running through the numbers? Yeah, you know, I think the numbers were just okay. The revenue beat that came in was entirely driven by promotions in North America. So they're discounting to sell. And that's something we don't want to see. And as you mentioned earlier, the inventories are up about 45% year over year, 15% quarter over quarter. That's too high, especially in an environment where they've already been discounting. They should have cleared a lot of it out by now, and they haven't. So I think... I'm curious. I'm sorry, Puna. I just want uh, on the inventory. I, do we have any insight into whether that inventory buildup is basically a spillover from the previous inventory that they already had, or whether this was actually new orders coming in in anticipation of uh, whatever type of sales of growth that they are, are, are expecting? So we don't. But my guess would be that it's a combination of both. Remember, retailers order inventory six to nine months in advance. So some of these orders that are coming in may have already been pushed out onto the boat and shipped before they could curb those orders. So it's still high regardless of how you look at it. Their sales are not climbing by 45% for inventory to be up for more than 40%. And where are the bright spots? Where's the resiliency, Poonam? Because this is a very internationally focused company that tried to go to lengths to remind us of that diversification. Yeah, absolutely. And look, the numbers, you know, if you look at the numbers, EMEA is still doing well. It's doing well. Asia Pacific, outside of China, did well also. It grew about 5% year over year. So the demand and the brand outlook is still healthy to a certain extent. It's just that the consumer could slow down, especially in North America, and with promotions rising. It's a double-edged sword that they're up against. And what in about China? China's still weak. It was down 16%. It was in line, uh, roughly, with estimates. But um, we're waiting to hear from them if that's improved at all in the last month or so, because the COVID situation there is still um, pretty prevalent. It has been easing compared to earlier this year. So we do expect a better second half than a first half. But still, you know, China gains are what's needed to really turn the story around. The focus is on China for Nike more than anything else. Uh, part of the other story with Nike, at least one that had made it attractive to a lot of investors here, was uh, the push that they had made into digital, selling directly to the consumer, which gave them a little bit more control over the brand and, of course, over pricing. We've seen a little bit of a dampening effect, uh, I guess partly because of the currency uh, adjustments as well as a few other factors. Uh, do you think that the build-out of that will continue to work in Nike's favor or work against it? It will definitely work in Nike's favor. Digital is the right way to go. DTC is the right way to go. It's more profitable. It gives them more control over the brand. And it is the way that most brands are leaning towards today. So we think it is the right strategy. It will add and flow, but in the long run, that is what we